What's up, math scholars? Mrs. Harp here on a Friday. Not really, it's Thursday, but we have a four-day weekend, so I'm pretty happy about that. We're learning 5, 6, day 2. Slightly more difficult than yesterday, but not as difficult as what we did in 5, 5. We're going to be finding common denominators, least common multiples, least common denominators, but not actually making them common denominators, and that's what's weird. We're going to be using them to clear the fractions. So this first slide, there's nothing to write. Oh, yeah. Who's excited to learn today? <laughs> yeah! yeah! We can't start the lesson unless we're excited. There's nothing to write down on the slide, but um, it's just warning you. There could be extraneous solutions. Just be aware of that and check for that, which we did last night, so no problem. I'm going to go ahead and tell you the goal of the day, though. I think that'll help if I do that. I forgot to do it in my last class. The goal of the day is to use the least common multiple um, as a way to clear fractions. So the overall goal of the day is to clear the fractions out. So if you're not actually clearing fractions, you're not actually probably doing your job. Use the least common multiple as a way to clear the fractions. And you basically use it as a multiplier. You multiply through by the LCM on every single term. That's our goal. So you, you don't need to write that down unless you want to. But it doesn't look like you guys are, so that's okay. All right, let's try a problem. What's our goal? Clear the fractions. I think I should almost write that on every slide. Our goal is to clear the fractions. Keep your eye on the goal. All right, so we're going to write down what our LCM is, and we're going to use that as our tool to help us clear the fractions. And, uh, we got our phones in, our book bags every day. Alright, so our two denominators are 2 and x. Do I need to factor either of those? No. no. So easy. Check, mark, check, mark. Who's on your list? 2. Check, mark, check, mark. Who's on your list? So 2x is our common, least common multiple. We're going to use it to multiply through by every single term keeping the goal in mind that we're doing this to clear the fraction. Okay. So I'll put a times 2x here, I'll put a times 2x here, and I'll put a times 2x here. you got to do your common multiplier, and you got to multiply it by every single term. If there was four terms, I would multiply it by the fourth term as well. Okay, so let's look at our first fraction. Will the 2 be able to cancel if I'm multiplying by a 2x? You betcha. So that first term would be a 7x. Look at our second term. Would this x cancel if I multiply by 2x? You betcha. I would be left with a 6. And then what would happen over on the right? There's no fractions to clear, so 6x. All right. I'll pause the video and let you guys finish that all by yourself. So our final answer is negative 6. Any questions? One second. Oh, one second. Okay. All right. So our goal is to clear our fractions. Luckily, these are some easy fractions. My one denominator is an x minus 5 as a group. My other denominator is an x. So let's make our LCM list. Check, mark, check, mark. Who's on my list? Check, mark, check, mark. Who's on my list? So what I just found is the LCM that I will be using as a multiplier. I'm not making my denominators this. I'm using it as a multiplier to clear my fractions. Okay, that's our goal. Question? Could we like rearrange that to make a circle of fractions on one side? Uh, sure. Do you want to do that? I mean, I mean, Ethan's pretty scholarly, so I'm actually going to go with that idea. I think he's, he's um, got a good idea. If we would move this term to this side, we could add it over. I did not do this in my last class, but that would make it a positive, and I kind of like the idea of a positive. So why not take that scholarly advice Ethan just gave us? So it would give us a 1 equals 3 over x plus 8 over x minus 5. We were still going to have to do the same mathematics. We still have to multiply through everybody by our LCM to clear our fractions. Okay. 
So you could, I mean, you could solve this problem using common denominators, but this is just a different method called fraction clearing. Okay, how are we doing? So far, so good? All right, let's take our LCM and multiply it by all three terms. So I'm going to put it here. I'm going to put it here. I should have left myself some space. Sorry about that. And I'm going to put it over here. Getting a little messy, so just keep track of what's happening here. Okay, I don't want to go too fast, so how are we doing? What is 1 times x? 1x. So I'm just going to write that as 1x. I think it'll be a little more natural. And then I'm going to distribute it into everybody. Okay? So that would be x squared minus 5x on the left hand side. Because uh, it was 1 times x. <laughs> it was a 1, but I multiply it by the LCM. And the LCM was x times x minus 5. Don't get it? Okay. Um, let's head over here. Remember our goal is clear the fractions. Will this help me clear out my denominator? Sure will. This little x right here will cancel out. Just get a scribble them out. And then you can work on distributing your 3. 3x minus 15. <coughs> okay. Our goal is clearing fractions. Will this accomplish our goal for us? Sure will. This x minus 5 will cancel with this x minus 5. And what will be left? A plus 8x. Because this x and the 8 will multiply. So I'm going to pause the video and let all you little equation solving scholars uh, finish this one up for me. And then we'll check, okay? All right. So we kind of combined our like terms, got everything on one side, and then used the old-fashioned factor method to solve. So you definitely could pause the video and kind of check along with my work and make sure you agree. We did discuss that the 15 and the 1 both are good answers because neither one would cause any denominator to be a 0. So we, had, we don't have any extraneous solutions on this one or anything. That's a very long problem. We have one more. Okay, one more problem and we're done because they take a while. One more and we're done. And this one. Oh, I know. There's three denominators. We have to take all three denominators into account when we compile our LCM. So you write it down and I'll list out my denominators. That's one of my denominators. The second denominator I'm actually going to factor. Do you know how x squared minus 9 would factor? Mm -hmm. That's my second denominator. This is my third denominator. So when I do my LCM list, I have to take into account all three. We'll let you catch up to me. All right, so when I do my check marks, I have to go through all three of the denominators. Ready? Check, mark, check, mark. Who's on my list? Um, okay, so this one here is this denominator. This one here is this denominator in factored form. And this one here is in this denominator. We've never done three denominators before. It's like our first time ever. All right, check, mark, check, mark. Who's on your list? So that's my common denominator. You know what I did the other day that I'm going to do this problem real quick? I'm going to replace this x squared minus 9 as its factored form. So I used the white box the other day to do that. We're going to definitely do that real quick. Having it in factor form just makes working out. Oh, that's when it's circle. Interesting. I want a white square. There we go. So this is going to be an x plus 3 and an x minus 3. All right. So we're going to use that LCM as our common multiplier for all three of the fractions. And what's our goal? Clear the fractions! So we'll see who gets to clear on this. Yeah? Did we use the LCM on both the denominator and the numerator? No, just the numerator. Because we're trying to clear the denominator. Yep, so it's different. It's different from what we've done previous in the week. Hey, you know what I'm now going to coin the Ethan method? 
Ethan's like, how about we bring this term over here so we can work in the land of the positives? Remember how you did that in the last problem? Are you guys okay if I do that? So picture visually me picking this up and adding it over to this side. Okay, so I would now have a positive 4x over x plus 3. I would now have a positive 6 over x minus 3. And then this would still be on this right hand side. I love that method. Ethan, like, I'm going to give you a ticket for that. I wouldn't have ever thought of that method myself, but it's going to avoid us having this awkward subtraction sign between our fraction. Okay? Thank you. A plus. That must be like a New York strategy they taught him. Uh. All right, let's use our LCM on every single fraction in the numerator only. Spencer had a great question. Because what's our goal? Clear the fractions. That's our goal today. So if I put my LCM here, will anything cancel? Everything. Awesome. That's gone and that's gone. And I just have an 8x squared over here. If I put my LCM right here, who will cancel? Good. I don't want to go too fast. How are we doing? Good. Okay. So I'll distribute the 6 and get 6x plus 18. I'll kind of wait a second if we can catch up. I have one more place to do my LCM, my first fraction. X plus 3, X minus 3. Who's going to go away? So all our denominators are gone, and that 4X will have to distribute. Ooh, that's going to get us to be a squared. 4X squared minus 12X. All right, I'm going to pause the video and give it a whirl that you can finish this off by yourself. See how you do. See how scholarly you can do. I do have the video rolling because I want them to be able to watch the steps that I'm doing. Common monomial, that's nice. Or two. And then you still have to do your box method. So hopefully you kind of followed all my steps. It did end up being box method. I just discussed with the class that we would actually want to trash the negative 3 solution because it's extraneous. If you'd put a negative 3 in, that very, very first fraction at the top on the right, a negative 3 plus 3 is 0, and that is bad, bad news. So since it's Thursday, we're going to do a pre-roll for the homework. So we'll see how that goes. Have a happy weekend.